Today we're going to begin graphing quadratic functions. The graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. A quadratic function is any equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. There are other forms, but this is the form we're going to look at today. a cannot equal zero, otherwise I don't have a squared term, and you have to have a squared term for the quadratic function. That will be your highest exponent on your variable, would be the two. The minimum is the lowest point in the graph. The maximum is the highest point in the graph. Your vertex is either going to be the minimum or the maximum point of the parabola, depending on if it opens up or opens down. And we'll look at that a little later in the notes. Your axis of symmetry is the vertical line containing the vertex of the parabola. If you fold it along this line, you'll have two halves that will fold on top of each other. The formula to find the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. This is a line, so you must write x equals or you don't have a line. The value negative b over 2a is going to be your x-coordinate of the vertex. Our first example, y equals x squared plus 8x plus 12. I'm going to go ahead and write a, b, and c down. So a is 1, b is 8, c is 12. So to find the axis of symmetry, or the equation for that, it's x equals negative b over 2a. So the opposite of b is negative 8. That's over 2 times 1. So negative 8 over 2 is negative 4. Remember, this is a line. <clears throat> so your equation for your axis of symmetry is x equals negative 4. To find the coordinates of the vertex, we have the x-coordinate, negative 4. I need to find the y-coordinate, so all I have to do is plug in that x-value I just found. So that will be negative 4 squared, and I like to put all my x-values in parentheses. <clears throat> plus 8 times negative 4, plus 12. And when you type that in on your calculator or do that by hand, you'll get negative 4. We're going to go to the graph of this, which I've given you some graph paper in the note packet. For our graph, we just found our vertex, which was negative 4, negative 4. I'm going to put that in the middle of the table, and I'm going to ask you to find two values before that vertex and two values after. So I always want you to put the vertex in the middle. So two values before negative four would be negative five, negative six. Two values after negative four would be negative three and negative two. <clears throat> Just like we plugged in negative four into this equation, you would plug in negative six. When you plug in negative six, you'll get zero. When you plug in negative 5, negative 5 in parentheses squared plus 8 times negative 5 plus 12, just plug that in and you'll get negative 3. Plugging in negative 3, you'll get negative 3. And if you plug in negative 2, you'll get 0. <clears throat> you could get another point if you wanted to. I want two points before and after. The next one would be negative 1, 5 if you wanted to include it. Let's go ahead and graph this. So here's my x-axis, so at negative 6, I'm at 0. At negative 5, I'm at negative 3. Negative 4, I'm at negative 4. Negative 3, I'm at negative 3. Negative 2, I am at 0. And at negative 1, if I wanted to plot it, I was at 5. I could also plot negative 7, that's going to be at 5 as well. And so my graph looks like this.
the domain, which we're going to write on the other sheet in a minute, this graph goes left forever and it goes right forever. And we're going to start writing the domain and range in interval notation. So for my domain, left forever is going to be negative infinity. And it looks like a point, but it's not a point. And it goes to positive infinity. So this is the left side. This is the right. You go small to large. And the infinities always have parentheses. So you have left forever, so negative infinity. And then it's going right forever. That's positive infinity. <clears throat> the range... is your low to high. So this is floor to ceiling. So if you want to do low, high, that's fine. Or floor to ceiling. However, it helps you visualize it. Okay, the lowest this goes is negative four. So negative four is here. Sorry about that, my dog's going in and out of the doggy door. So the floor is negative four. That's the lowest y value it goes. And then how high it goes is it goes up forever, so it goes to infinity. So domain is left and right, range is up and down. So on our graph, the domain is gonna be your x values left and right. Your range will be your y values up and down. So it goes floor, the lowest value to the highest value. Always go low to high. We're going to put that in on number one on your other sheet now. We just covered the domain. I'm going to go ahead and write those answers in here. For example, two. I have y equals x squared plus x. Let's go ahead and write our A, B, and C down. A is 1. B is 1, and there's no constant, so C is 0. The equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals negative B, so negative 1 over 2 times 1. So that's negative 1 over 2. If you want to write that as a decimal, you can. So this is a line. I'm going to go ahead and write x equals negative 0 0.5. You have to write that as a line. To find the coordinates of the vertex, I already have the x coordinate. I'm going to plug that in and find the y. I like to put my x's in parentheses. Make sure you put the square on the outside. And you can type that in on your calculator, and you're going to get negative 0 0.25. So my vertex, the x-coordinate is negative 0 0.5. The y-coordinate is negative 0 0.25. And I'm going to scoot my paper up just a smidge. We didn't put that here on this one. The x coordinate was negative 4 here, the y coordinate was negative 4, so I'm going to go ahead and write that point. We're going to go graph that function now. For my graph, I want to put my vertex in the middle. So my vertex for this was negative one half, so negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.25, and I want to find two values before it. So negative one half is between 0 and negative 1. So two values before negative one half would be negative 1 and negative 2. Two values after would be 0 and 1. If you plug in negative 2 here, negative 2 squared is going to be positive 4. And then 
plus negative 2 will give you 2 on that. <clears throat> if I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1 plus a negative 1 gives you 0. And again, you can plug in 0. 0 squared is 0 plus 0 is 0. And then when I plug in 1, I'll get 2. If you want to find another point, you could. The next point would be 2, 6. Let's go ahead and graph these. Here's my x-axis. At negative 2, I'm at 2. Negative 1, I'm at 0. At negative 1 half, I'm at a fourth of a space. So that one's not on a nice value, but I do want you to always graph the vertex. 0, I'm at 0. 1, I'm at 2. And if I want to graph 2, that's kind of a nice point to have. I'll put 2, 6, and I can go backwards over here. That's also going to be at 6. There is my graph. <clears throat> if I wanted to, my axis of symmetry is the line x equals negative 1 half. I could draw that in. I didn't ask you to, but that's kind of nice to do. You can see if I fold it along that line, I'll fold my parabola in half. Your domain, for all these quadratics that open up and down, your domain is always going to be negative infinity to infinity. So that will be a freebie question on the test. Your range, however, is your floor to ceiling or low to high. How low does this graph go? Well, that's going to be the y-coordinate of the vertex. So the lowest it goes, and it includes it, so you'll, you'll use a bracket, is negative 0 0.25. And the highest it goes is infinity. Infinities always use parentheses. So if the point is included, you will use a bracket if the point is not included, you'll use a parenthesis. The infinities always use parentheses. Let's go back now and fill in your domain. So it's negative infinity to infinity. And your range we just found was negative 0 0.25 to infinity. Example three. Let's get my paper up. I want to find the equation of symmetry. Let's go ahead and write our a, b, and c down. So a is negative one, b is two, and c equals negative three. The formula for axis of symmetry is negative b over two a. So it's going to be negative 2 over 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2 over negative 2, which is 1. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Remember, it's a line. You have to have x equals. That's also the x-coordinate of the vertex. So I'm going to plug that in for y, or for x to find y. So this is negative 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 3. When I plug that in on my calculator or by hand, I'll get negative 2. So my vertex for this is going to be 1, negative 2. I'm going to skip to the other sheet so we can graph it. We just found our vertex. Let's go ahead and put that in the middle here. And I want to find two values before it and two values after it. And could you pick any values before and after it? Yes. I'm just going to pick the ones that are closest to it just so my graph is all together. If you pick values that are higher up, you may go off your graph. You'll need to make a bigger graph. Plugging in negative 1 into this equation. If you were to plug negative 1, that would be negative, negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. That would give you that first value down here. 
and that is negative six. If I were to plug in zero, negative, and then zero squared is zero, plus two times zero, that's just gonna give you negative three. Plug in two, you'll have negative three. Plug in three, you get negative six. Graphing this, I like to plot my vertex first. So at one, I'm at negative two. Zero, I'm at negative three. Negative one, I was down at six, negative six. And then at two, I'm at negative three. Three, your value is negative six for the y value. And then now we have our parabola. If I wanted to, I could draw my axis of symmetry. That was x equals the x corner of the vertex, so x equals one, so that's a vertical line at one, and notice it cuts the parabola into two equal pieces. Your domain for this is negative infinity to positive infinity. It goes left forever, right forever. This is an interval, not a point. Your range is floor to ceiling. Notice the floor this time, it goes down forever. So my floor is negative infinity, and the highest it reaches, this one has a maximum value, and that's gonna be the y coordinate of the vertex, so that's negative two. Both previous examples had minimums. This one has a maximum and that is your vertex. Let's go ahead and fill that in on example three for my domain and range, negative infinity to infinity, and then my range we found was negative infinity to negative two. Remember, there's a bracket on negative two because negative two is included. Example four. For this problem, a is 6, b is negative 3, c equals 1. My axis of symmetry is x equals negative b, so that will be 3, over 2 times a, so 3 over 12, so that's 1 fourth. If you want to write that as a decimal, you can, 0 0.25. Remember, this is a line, so you should have x equals. So there is my line, my equation for the axis of symmetry. To find the y-coordinate of the vertex, I have the x-coordinate, so I'm just going to plug that in to find my y. When I simplify that on my calculator, I get 0 0.625, so not a real nice number, at least to graph. This is my vertex. I'm going to flip to the other page so we can graph it. We'll put our vertex in the middle of our table. That was 0 0.25, 0 0.625. And I want two values before 2,500, so that will be 0 and negative 1. And then I want two values after it, so I will maybe pick 1 and 2. On this first one, if I plug in negative 1, you'll get 10. If I plug in 0, you'll have 1. If I plug in 1, I get 4. And for my last one, when I plug in 2, 
I get 19. That last one's not a very nice value. If you wanted to plug in 1.5, you can probably get something that's closer to our graph. So that last value here, I'm not gonna be able to, to plot. So at one fourth of the space over, so 0.25, I'm at a little over half the space down. That's my vertex. Let's go ahead and plot zero, I'm at one. At negative one, I'm at 10. One, I'm at four. And two, I'm way off my graph. So this graph is very skinny. Your domain is negative infinity to infinity. Your range is floor to ceiling. The floor is your y value. The lowest y value this goes is here. This is a minimum. It is your vertex and the lowest y value is 0 0.625. It does reach that, so you need a bracket. And then it goes at forever after that, so that'll be infinity. Infinities always use parentheses. Remember my domain and range, I'm writing an interval notation. Those are not points. Let's go ahead and write what we found for our domain and range for number four. So negative infinity to infinity and our range was 0 0.625 to infinity. Our last example, number five. A is one. There is no X term here, just an X squared and a constant, so B is zero. And C is four. Our axis of symmetry is negative B, so negative zero, over two times a. This numerator is zero, so this is just zero. So x equals zero is our axis or our line of symmetry. Remember it's a line, you have to have x equals. To find the y coordinate, you'll plug in x is zero, so zero squared plus four, which gives you four. Our vertex for this one then is zero, four. And now let's go graph that. Let's put our vertex in the middle of our graph. So my vertex is zero, four. I'm gonna pick two value, x values before zero and two x values after zero. And then if you plug in negative two, negative two squared is positive four plus four is eight. Negative one squared is one plus four, that's five. Plug in one, one squared plus four is five. Plug in two, two squared plus four is eight. Graphing those, negative two, I'm up at eight. At negative one, I'm up five. Zero, I'm up four. One, I'm up five. And at two, I am up eight. So my graph looks like this. This one does have a minimum. You can draw on the axis of symmetry. It is the y-axis, which is the line x equals zero. Domain is the same as it was on every problem before this one. So negative infinity to infinity. It goes left forever, right forever. The range is floor to ceiling. So you'll look at your Y coordinate for your vertex. And it's either gonna start or end on the Y coordinate of the vertex. So here's your Y coordinate. Since it is a minimum, that's where it starts. So I have four and then it goes to infinity. So floor, lowest Y value, and it goes up forever. So there is my range. Let's go ahead and put that on our other sheet. Our domain then is negative infinity to infinity. 
And the range was four to infinity. And this completes our notes.